Hello everyone, it's Emily from Cottage Remedies. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about food in this video. So whilst the quote by Hippocrates, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food is definitely true, it is a bit broad today. So I'm going to briefly sort of make it a little bit more detailed as to which foods are actually medicine because we've got foods can be poison and other foods are medicine. So in this video, I want to assume that most viewers would have a good idea of which foods are poisons and that should be avoided. Um, specifically, number one is seed oils because seed oils are rancid, they cause um, free radicals in the body, which then create inflammation. Um, they harden like plastic, which can clog your arteries and lead to heart disease. And they also were originally used as engine lubricants. So they, are, they were never or should never be consumed. These seed oils are also known as vegetable oils like canola oil or sunflower oil, you know, rapeseed oil, um, even soybean oil, you don't want to consume that either. So that's something that is very common today. When you start to read ingredients, you'll notice that that ingredient is in virtually everything. Um, just, I would put that as the number one, it's just a no-no. Then there's other, you know, tiny things to look out for, like preservatives, which um, in nutrition labels, they're usually number two. So anytime you see number two, it's usually a preservative. MSG, monosodium glutamate, you don't want to consume that either. That actually affects your brain chemistry and is a carcinogen. So you don't want to consume that. That's a flavor enhancer. And usually it's the number six in nutrition labels. Um, and then there's obviously artificial food dyes um, and other chemicals that you find in food that are best to be avoided. But for the most part, fast food chains, it's those food from a fast food chain is always gonna be in the poison category of food um, and will just cause damage to your body. Then besides that, um, of course, there's what we've done to the food that can class it as um, in the poison category a little bit. For example, um, these glyphosate like herbicides and pesticides, um, they are absolutely poisonous. They cause so many problems in the body, wreck your gut health. And a lot of autoimmune diseases, which I've already talked about, is not really your body attacking itself, but it is quite often a result of these sprays and toxins that we um, use on the crops. So that is why it's always great to either seriously wash your produce or just try and source organically grown produce. So those are the foods in the poison category. Um, I would put those as like the poisons because poisons is like a strong word. Those are the ones that you really, really want to avoid. Of course, you want to avoid the sprays, but we, we're going to be exposed to these sprays. The food is not the problem. It's the spray on the food. And that's why I put it in that category. But then there is... Um, these foods aren't poisons because they're not chemicals. The chemicals are the poison, um, are the poisonous foods. But there are foods that we just know aren't good for our body, like unfermented soy or coffee beans, which most people don't like to hear, or um, even things like cacao to a certain extent. Um, and also dark leafy greens, just things like that, that um, I would put in the middle category of they aren't good 
for the body. They aren't actually good and they aren't health foods essentially, but they aren't bad enough to be in the poison category. But I will talk about what foods are actually medicine for the body, what foods are healing for the body and should be eaten and eaten freely. So the biggest category of course is animal products. Animal products should be your main calorie source. Um, that can be <laughs> virtually, yeah, all meats, um, eggs, and eat lots of animal fats. Of course, organs from an animal is great. And, um, you know, seafood, all of it. Anything that comes from an animal is the best nutrition wise the best it is the food that is designed for the human body also dairy dairy is fantastic dairy is amazing it can be fermented or fresh dairy if the dairy is fresh it's always best to find raw dairy that's unpasteurized otherwise if you really want to have um, like fresh dairy I'm talking cream or milk then the other option would be always choose non-homogenized but it would be pasteurized if it's not raw but then just try and find a very high quality dairy like you know organic grass-fed jersey milk because then you know that it's going to be much higher in nutrients and particularly fat soluble vitamins anyways because when cows eat pasture like grass then they are getting their natural diet so they're naturally getting more nutrients so that the milk will be more nutrient dense so that's okay otherwise um, fermented dairy is great with if you don't have access to raw dairy at all I deem fermented dairy like cheese or milk kefir um, sour cream to be fine even if it is pasteurized but then still do the try and find the highest quality grass-fed dairy that you can all animal products can be eaten raw or cooked that includes meat that includes organ meats um, so muscle meat organ meats you can eat it cooked or you can eat it raw eggs you can eat them cooked or you can eat them raw and you're not gonna have a problem with them but always source high quality produce so it's coming from a healthy animal then you know that you're not going to have an issue you know um steak tartare carpaccio ceviche sashimi all these raw animal product cuisines are nothing new and have been eaten for a long time i eat them i eat a balance of raw animal products and cooked animal products and eggs particularly, eggs give you every nutrient that your body needs. And the cooking and heating process, it definitely, it denatures proteins um, and it also does kill off a lot of water soluble vitamins like B vitamins and can, you know, just damage the nutrients to a certain extent. This is the heating process. So you, you can still, of course, live completely fine eating all cooked animal products but the animal product in its raw state is much, it is optimal, it is much better because um, then it's unaffected. It's also got the structured water still within it because the steam is the water being cooked off. And so then you're also getting structured water, which is going to be very effective at hydrating you. So if you just have a, this is like your multivitamin by drinking a raw egg every now and again or a few um, and it's fantastic I wrote a massive article about raw eggs you can find it on my website um, it's very in-depth so I've talked or put information out extensively on that topic then I would put fruits next as the next most important after animal products Fruits are fantastic to get lots of minerals, particularly 
and also structured water. So if you aren't having raw animal products, then at least you can get structured water from fruits because they're typically eaten in their raw form. And so fruits are amazing. Um, I personally try to mostly eat fruits that I can remove the skin. So like bananas or mangoes, um, avocado, because then the skin is like the protective layer from the sprays. Berries, I do eat berries. Not often strawberries, but sometimes mostly um, wild berries. And they are organic and snap frozen. Otherwise you can just try and find organic fruits as much as you can, but you don't always have to um, when it comes to fruit. And so that's why you can just opt for fruit where you can remove the skin. Even with apples, you can just peel off the skin because a lot of apples have wax on them. So with apples, I would almost always take off the skin, but uh, I don't really eat apples. So <laughs> then um, vegetables come afterwards. Vegetables don't really give you anything, um, which is, yeah, I know, ironic, right? Because we're told that vegetables are that healthy for us, but all they really have is fiber, but fiber is not an essential nutrient at all. Um, humans cannot digest fiber or borderline no, no animal at all can digest cellulose, which is fiber. That's why ruminant animals have, you know, cows have four stomachs and they use a fermentation process to kind of use microbes and bacteria to break down that cellulose but we don't have that so it's even worse for us we have it's like virtually impossible for us to actually digest the fiber so that is why they say it helps with constipation because it pretty much just gets excreted straight away and that sounds fine but the problem is that fiber is very coarse and so it actually causes micro abrasions in your gut lining. So it's not good for leaky gut at all. It also acts like an anti-nutrient. So it inhibits absorption of nutrients and contributes to digestive issues like bloating. So when it comes to vegetables, they are more of just a delicacy or um, a way to kind of bulk up your meal so you don't eat as much meat if you do have a concern of for example vitamin osis um, which some people have experienced so a little bit of vegetables is not really an issue um, and well vegetables if you do cook them they are then easier to digest so you know you've got your categories of vegetables Nightshades, personally, I don't consume very often. I do tend to avoid nightshades, but here and there I will have them. And otherwise, uh, yeah, I don't eat, vegetables are a very small part of my diet. I do eat them from time to time, but just not that many, not much, right? <laughs> and then there is the category of starch so you've got carbohydrates within the vegetables a little bit like the lactose in the milk and the fruit um and then there is starch so i don't personally eat any starch at least not presently in the gap site there is no starch um but starch is you know your legumes your potato, rice, um, I think that's the most of them. It's just those starchy vegetables, uh, or the flowers, of course the grains, yeah, so your pasta, bread, all of those types of foods. And that is not essential for us to consume either. If you do consume it, see, things like potato, that's a nightshade, 
um, it it's not really a necessary food to eat. The only reason you would eat potato is, I suppose, for taste. Um, rice, with rice, at least you can prepare it well. So it's good to get organic rice. Always get white rice, not brown rice, um, so that the bran has been removed. And then soak the rice overnight in a brine like salt water or apple cider vinegar diluted in water so then that helps to kind of pre-digest the rice a little bit and then you can do things like um cook the rice in meat stock so then there is now nutrients in the rice and it is easier to digest and a lot of the anti-nutrients will be broken down especially from the vinegar or in the brine so at least you can do that see with potato you can't really do that so it's just very starchy very heavy starches are not easy for us to digest they um are very they ha they have like a gluey tendency um and they are pure glucose glucose is not sweet fructose is the sweet sugar with bread the main issue is that virtually all the bread that you find in, you know, commercial breads in the shops, it has so many ingredients that bread never used to have. Um, like it's got soy lettuce in, it's got, you know, um, raising agents, it's just got a lot of things, preservatives, it's pretty much, most breads have preservatives. So it's got a lot in there that should not be consumed when eating bread. And flour, because the wheat has been so um, genetically bred, it's very important to try and source organic wheat um, because the GMO of the wheat has contributed to a lot of these wheat allergies and that's why it's becoming more common. So the best way to consume bread is to actually make your own sourdough with organic flour. That is the best type of bread to consume because it's a um, long fermented bread. All bread is fermented to a certain extent but it's usually only shortly fermented and so it's not actually broken down at all. Whereas um, sourdough has been fermented for a long time and it's actually using cultures because it's a sourdough starter so then it's going to actually be much more beneficial for you when you do eat it so that is um, the best way to consume starch if you are going to I do think that you know if you don't have any sort of health issues at all that you're trying to heal um, then eating those foods but prefer preparing them properly and trying to source higher quality grains is the best way to do that. Um, but then if you are trying to heal for the period that you are using food to heal, then cutting out starch is a better idea because if you have a damaged gut or weak digestion, starch is going to be very difficult for your body to be breaking it down. I did also forget to mention sweeteners. So Honey is fantastic. Honey has always been considered a medicine. Um, it's full of enzymes and I do have to note that you have to always source 100% raw honey, completely unheated honey. Pasteurized honey is damaged. There is no longer any bacteria in that honey. The enzymes are all destroyed and it's just pure sugar. So you want to Stay away from pasteurized honey, but raw honey is fantastic. It's also an animal product, which is great. Um, then molasses is amazing as well. You want to get unsulfured blackstrap molasses. That is great. It's very high in minerals, which is amazing. Um, maple syrup is great as well. Try and find organic maple syrup. Then these uh, sweeteners like erythritol, xylitol, and stevia, they 
ha they actually aren't great um, for you to consume. If you're going, if you're wanting something like that, I would suggest to actually consume raw sugar, like raw cane sugar, um, before choosing those options. They are, you know, keto friendly and low carb, but they have been shown in a lot of studies to have negative effects on the body. One was kidney damage or um, higher risk of strokes. So stevia, for example, is 200 times sweeter than sugar. And so it's going to be making you crave sweetness a lot more. So I would probably just, you know, veer away from those options. Like I said, I would actually suggest raw organic sugar, cane sugar over that. That's good. But it's the refined white sugar that you don't want to consume at all. That gets absorbed way too quickly. And it has, as we know, like the poison of this processed sugar has massive negative effects on the body. So the white sugar, the caster sugar is to be avoided. Um, and then any artificial sweetener, completely avoid. They are chemically produced and actually have so, they have links to a bunch of things, particularly neurological disorders. Um, so you want to avoid those completely. And when it comes to drinks, raw milk is fantastic. Homemade kombucha is great or water kefir. There's also milk kefir. Vegetable and fruit juices are great as well. And I could have missed one that I'm not even sure of. So there is a fair bit of like there's of course lots of drinks and then your um, filtered and if possible structured water with a high trace mineral or gray salt mixed in. You should be drinking that daily for hydration instead of drinking plain H2O which is actually dehydrating. And so that category would be the food that is considered to be medicinal and healing. I also forgot to mention beef stock. So chicken stock, beef stock, any sort of meat stock or bone broth. I do suggest meat stock instead of bone broth because bone broth is way too high in histamines because it's actually been cooked for a tremendously long time. So that is why I say meat stock, but that is also a great drink to have as well. The main part when trying to figure out all these dietary guidelines of what's good, what's bad, um, is to make sure that you're eating nutrient dense food. Always know that animal products have the highest nutrients and most bioavailable nutrients. They have to be consumed. We rely on nutrition from animals to survive. Then there are plenty of other foods to, you know, make your diet interesting. But the main part is to do your best to source the most natural, high quality you can. Um, spray free, hopefully organic, because you want to avoid GMOs. Like when you go to the store, you're looking for fruit um, and you see grapes and you've got the option between seedless grapes or grapes with seeds in them go for the grapes with seeds in them because the seedless grapes are GMO. You're basically eating an infertile fruit. Same with watermelons. If there's no seeds, don't eat it. It's, it's GMO. So you want to go for the watermelon that has the seeds. So hopefully that's a um, really basic guideline of how to eat. Um, processed foods most often have ingredients in them that you don't want to be consuming. Majority of commercial products that you know you go into a main store in Australia, it's you know Coles, Woolworths, Aldi, or IGA, and it's got an ingredients label. Most of the time, it's going to have seed oils, it's going to have preservatives, it's going to have even natural flavors. But the thing is, is that with natural flavors, yes, it's better than artificial flavors, but Natural flavors just means it had to originate from a natural source. They can chemically alter it as much as they want to, but 
it just had to be natural to begin with. So it's still not really like, it's still not actually good for you. It sounds good because it's natural flavors, but they also don't have to tell you on the label what it is, what is the natural flavor. They don't have to tell you that. Um, same with spices, like when it's just vague, like spices, you don't know what's in there. Um, they don't tell you, it just says spices. So the best thing is to start getting used to reading ingredient labels and trying to discern between a product that is good for you based on the ingredient label and one that has red flags and you don't want to be consuming that. But the best way altogether is to try and make as many of your foods from scratch. That is the best way to go about it. Um, start cooking with animal fats. Don't even cook with olive oil. Olive oil is a monounsaturated fat. It is way too heat sensitive to be cooking with. Olive oil is fantastic when cold pressed to be consuming on salads or however you want to consume it. It's amazing. It actually has anti-inflammatory properties, but you don't want to cook with it because it will go rancid as soon as you heat it. And this is what's going to be doing a similar thing to what these rancid seed oils do in your body, which is create free radicals, which then creates inflammation. So just cook with only saturated fats. You've got ghee, you've got tallow, lard, butter. You also have coconut oil. These are fantastic to be cooking with. There's plenty of options. Just go with those ones. If you still want to be using condiments, then for example, tomato sauce, majority of the commercial tomato sauces are loaded with refined sugar, loaded with it. You can make your own tomato sauce if you want to, or you can go to a health food store and they will most probably have a natural tomato sauce and just check the ingredients, see what they're like. Hopefully there is no seed oils, hopefully there is no flavoring, and for the best part, if you can see that there's just very few ingredients and they're whole and natural, then that is a much better option to go with. Be careful not to choose a sugar-free tomato sauce and then find out that it has an artificial sweetener in it, which most of them do. This goes for any product that you see is labeled sugar-free and most likely it's going to have, you know, aspartame or an artificial sweetener that is disastrous for your health it's so much worse than actually processed sugar so keep an eye out for that and i could pretty much go on forever about random food tips but i'm not so i'm just going to stop it here so i hope that this starts to clear up the food is medicine sort of statement because there are a lot of food lies out there about what is actually good for us and what is not so anyways i will see you in my next video and thank you for watching